Okay, I can see the numbers rolling up still, but uh, let me just say to everyone that we will be recording this, and this is a free webinar organized by Vended, and big thanks to Tavi for taking the hour and joining us and, uh, and giving us a very interesting topic. So I asked you, you know, would you talk about the current times? And I think you said that the only thing that matters is visionary leadership and execution, and you'd rather talk about that. And I think that's what we are going to hear about, hear about today. Uh, I'm gonna go through some housekeeping still while people log in, so uh, one more minute. And uh, uh, the housekeeping basically is that we're using uh, Zoom webinar and it has a very good questions and answers module. So please use this module to post questions during the session. And we will be either picking them up if they are very, very topical, or then we'll leave at least 15 minutes at the end to, to answer the questions that you posted. And I guess that's, that's the, uh, the, the quick housekeeping. So just showing this slide, I'm gonna turn off the slide pretty soon, but the goal is to really jump into um, First, you know, your background, Tavi, I think you have a very, very interesting background. We met 2019 when I joined the Leaping or, or Solo board. And uh, you were introduced to me as, well, I think Alan, Alan said that, you know, you are the father of e-residence. And I think people use that, <laughs> that still today many, many times. So you, you've done so many things. So maybe you would actually start from, you know, web media and, and walk through the key things in your startup life up till today and i'll i'll turn the slides off so this will focus on you mm -hmm. um yeah i'm a software engineer by education and profession uh, my first job was a programmer and uh, i was in the second course of or like second year at university and uh, my first task was population registry so i uh, wasn't uh, so small task at all like uh, what was actually interesting is that we built that uh, with uh, four other uh, programmers. And now I know they do the same kind of system with 40 programmers, even though the tools have been like so much better nowadays, like uh, the ability to develop like uh, seems to be uh, slowering somehow because the amount of use cases or the concept or the basis of the, of the registry is the same, to be honest. Anyways, like uh, um, my first startup was actually a hardware startup. It was sort of more like a service company, and uh, uh, it was just some extra we did uh, on top of our programming work. And uh, I sold my part to my co-founder uh, after a couple of years, and uh, then joined Web Media that turned to Nortel. Right. And uh, for me, it was life changing because I had to move to another city. I have to I had to leave my my university studies, but in return, they gave me ability that I understood that this old fashioned waterfall uh, development model is is that just that it just doesn't work. I mean, we are talking about year two thousand here, and uh, I, I hope to find a place where. Uh, like company allows me to use like prototype uh, based uh, approach uh, for software development and uh, Nortel like allowed me to do that and uh, with less than four years we were number one software engineering company in Estonia and Nortel still is is, is great so it was that, that was my first startup my first millions I was the second largest shareholder on the uh, in time of exit. Uh, and then uh, I went to government uh, because yep. uh, I got I, I, I got this non-competition thing. Uh, I wouldn't compete in private sector. Uh, I, I worked as a government uh, chief information officer. Among others, we do very interesting reforms and projects. Uh, improve the VAT fraud uh, fight. Uh, and uh, I mean, I don't know if you know, but Estonia is the best tax collector in the world. I didn't know that. 
You don't Correct. know. Okay. Yeah. So if you open any OECD uh, report, you see that Estonia spends the least uh, money to collect one tax dollar. And it's all because uh, through optimization. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, the e-residence is more known, even though uh, from the money perspective, the, the, the tax controls were way more valuable for the country. I mean, we saved billions with first years. And uh, e-residence, yeah, I mean, that was a different type of animal. Uh, in, like, in, if, you, if you measure the profit of the project, the yearly profit, uh, and how much money is invested there, uh, and if you basically mirror this to the private sector world, uh, e-residence is a unicorn. Right. I mean, yeah, uh, it, I- makes, it makes more than 100 million uh, profit a year, like, so for the country. So, uh, no. Yeah. Um, it is like unicorn, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, par- parallelly, I started investing when I got my money. Well, and I sold my Northall shares. Uh, I started to invest. Uh, one of the first investments I did was into TransferWise, uh, which is wise now. Yeah. So uh, I was lucky to be there when the valuation was, I think, five million. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And after that, the others came. Uh, so today, um, I mean, Bolt Verif and the other big players, the one I missed was Pipe Drive. Right. Uh, so, well, and there, there are 10 unicorns in Estonia today. So, so uh, not, I'm not in all of them. Well, not sadly. Not today, but, <laughs> but you are in quite a few. Yeah. And uh, also there were a couple of teams where I was more than just an investor, uh, also helping uh, either in sales or in, in, in development. Uh, um, so even during the government period, because like you still want to be engaged with, with more interesting stuff. But to be honest, I have never worked as much as I did as a CIO. I mean, yeah. uh, the workload was, was enormous. And after the uh, government work, I, I started some consultancy firms and uh, looked what happens in India. Uh, one of my companies still works for India, already mm-hmm. five, on the fifth year. And uh, now I do a startup called cause.io, which is a, a platform um, to incentivize um, any stakeholder who helps your your business to grow or or to spread the world so basically to uh like it's very hard to motivate people uh outside of your company with options uh basically it's impossible because the bureaucracy is so heavy but right. we found we found a solution and uh, if you want to build a company together with your community then we are your tool and that's super interesting so i think that's like more or less my story that's that's uh, more than many people actually get to do in a lifetime. So congratulations for that. I think you, you've uh, had a very, very interesting career. Let me ask one question about the, the government job before we, we start jumping into, into leadership and, and execution. Uh, did, the, did the time, uh, you know, working for, for a government, or, or now you, you work for a couple of governments or, or multiple governments, but as, as a consultant, but did that influence somehow or somewhat the approach you have to startups today? Did, did you take, are there any, I, I know you obviously influence government mm-hmm, with your startup, mm-hmm. startup pro- approach, but, but did you take something from that time that you've been able to use on, on this side? Because we don't, many of us don't have any, any chance to do, to do that type of work. I mean, you have the chance, but you just don't dare. Like, right. uh, <laughs> yeah, <that's... laughs> let's be honest. Like, uh, I mean, who, 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 who wants to waste time? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, honestly, uh, uh, two things. Uh, first of all, um, uh, if you are the CEO of a big bank or CEO of a big startup, your influence to the world is still limited. Uh, or like, I mean, on country basis, it's limited compared uh, with your influence as a government high-level officer. I mean, the way who can, your reforms, your regulations, uh, 
um, like you might uh, increase the speed of internet in your country, like uh, you might uh, uh, change the ways how the taxes are collected and how much they are paid, etc. How open and free is your economy, etc. I mean, uh, there are bigger than, than in, in private enterprises. So that's why it's so sexy. The sad part is that uh, even if you bring billions to your country, right. you, will, you will get uh, no more than just negative comments. There is no upside. There is like either neutrality, like nobody cares, or like somebody whines and then and, and, and asks like, what kind of idiot you are like. And so, uh, so there is no like, oh, uh, you earn a billion, uh, here is your 10 million, let's say yeah. 1%, like uh, never happens. Yeah. Which means that you can't motivate your team in the same way like you do in private sector. You, you can't have like options or like, oh, and then we get that uh, goal achieved. And like uh, in government means like, oh, and then we get the one extra salary for the year. I mean, like, fuck, I mean, what's that? <laughs> one month? Like, so, uh, and it's not even the market level salaries. Like, so, uh, so it's very, to be honest, it's, uh, uh, it's a, like from the engineering perspective, it's a hell of experience from the personal perspective, the way how you are treated as a publicly exposed person afterwards. Like you can't open bank accounts. Like you have to have special yeah. controls. Like uh, it's not worth it. Right. Like, honestly, it's not worth it. Uh, yeah, it's super interesting. I mean, I spent like uh, months in with Finland to agree, let's say, uh, uh, that we should uh, uh, start jointly develop this X road thing. I mean, in Finnish, I think it's Palvelos Vaula or something like yes. that. Like, so, yeah. uh, I think we still use it with Estonia today. Yeah, yeah, but that was uh, my team's uh, achievement that we, we pushed it through, but like it took many years because, I mean, you are Finns, but still you need to discutera, which is more like a Swedish thing. But um, oh, the hell, like, like uh, so many trips to Helsinki wasted. Like, yeah. So, <laughs> so, so I, I think we can already get the execution to come, you know, come come through here. So, so I'm I'm gonna jump into the the topic here and and, and uh, try, let, let's let's start with leadership, um, and and maybe I'll I'll put you on the spot and say, hey. Uh, you know, can you define in your terms what is visionary leadership? Uh, and then let's go kick it off from there. I mean, for me, visionary leadership definitely is that somebody believes and and, and believes blindly, which means that uh, uh, even if there is criticism, like you, you might listen to criticism and you might even uh, consider some of those criticism, but in, in, in big play or big scale, you're just like uh, Steve Jobs type of guy who say that, uh, sorry, dudes and ladies, but you just don't get it. Like, and it takes time for you to get it. I mean, I think e-residency is a great example. Uh, nobody understood the vision. Like they, they like the idea that, oh, let's grow our uh, population from 1.3 million to 10 million. But uh, so 10 million was slightly more than Sweden. So uh, we would become the largest country in Nordics. <laughs> but uh, but like why, how, what it gives to us, like, uh, because we, 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 I mean, we had the infrastructure to serve those people digitally, but there wasn't any, I mean, there wasn't any agreement that banks actually open accounts to them or like uh, accounting firms start to serve them or auditing firms start to serve them. I mean, we just like believe that that all will happen when uh, basically uh, when, when, when demand comes, the supply will also react like uh, and yeah. vice versa. Yeah. So definitely the leadership needs to be a big believer. And that's so, a big difference, I think, with the managers, like where uh, you need uh, to be very rational and and uh, clear about your outcomes and uh, what is the what is the results that we measure and treat as a like decent achievement uh, compared with uh, visionary and like oh we are moving in the right directions like uh, like who cares that we don't have enough uh, errors yet like for example yeah I I, I think you nailed the 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 point there and I'll, I'll I'll put the the next step which I think is that if you have this blind I, I think blind self-belief 
and and obviously then other people start to start believing you. But you have to bring people along. And you mentioned Steve Steve Jobs here. But what are the successful business leader's traits? What does he have to have to be able to pull people along? I mean, you you have to have uh, have to be a hell of a storyteller, definitely, because uh, I mean, like, there's no point to just uh, be like a politician who starts to shout out a certain type of slogans uh, without any reasoning, like why this or that could or should work. So, uh, I mean, like one of the startups um, I started was the school for, for girls, like or girls in technology, uh, per se, that uh, I believe that uh, if we remove the boys from the classroom, uh, the, mm, let's say, ability to learn technology and, and willingness to learn uh, technology will radically change. Right. And I, I got lots of criticism in social media, lots of criticism from the government officers in that field that like you, an engineer, like uh, keep doing your software stuff. Like uh, we are the scientists in, in education, like uh, mm-hmm. please like don't come to our field. And now we have like 3000 girls almost in our school. It works like we have proven it like, but it was like uh, like uh, clear belief in the beginning but it was uh, explained by through some rationalities. Like uh, there are sex-based uh, schools in uni- uh, in in UK. I mean, it's like Harry Potter schools, like yep. uh, uh, and uh, female-only schools are performing way better in STEM. There has been several studies in Colombia, US, where uh, again, like if you have only girls uh, in the classroom performing better in in, in robotics and and, and STEM. So uh, it's, it wasn't just like a pure belief that like if you remove the boys, like everything starts to happen. It was still definitely like uh, some studies, some uh, some uh, justification behind it. So you have to have that like, so you have to build it like from piece to piece. And obviously like if you are ahead of your time, like, uh, uh, like um, I mean, everybody understands that yeah this is definitely tomorrow but we don't know if the tomorrow happens today or or, or like uh, years later uh yeah. another example uh, data embassies when the crimea happened in 2014 uh you know that estonia has been conquered every century like right. in the beginning I... it was germans then it was Danes, swedes russians poles swedes again russians uh i mean it like so for us it's not a question if it's a question when like and just this this uh, century hasn't happened yet. Like and obviously we believe that it doesn't. But but like if you are fully digitally savvy country and uh, you can't go back on papers uh, and let's say your country will be occupied again and then mm-hmm. freed again. Like uh, so in 1990s, uh, what happened was that we did the land reform. So basically, if anybody owned a farm before 1940 occupation, before uh, Soviet Union occupation, you got that farm back. Like, right. But uh, to prove that, you you showed the old church books and, and some paper, paper proofs that, that this this farm was yours. Uh, but if everything is digital, like how are you going to prove that in the future? So you have to have like some kind of uh, country in the cloud concept or like uh, some registries backed up and, and stored. Uh, and we went even uh, one step further, like can we survive as a nation uh, if, uh, if, uh, if the country is occupied again? And again, like uh, I got, this, this was my PhD and I, I even got my lots of criticism from my own university saying like, nobody needs that. Like uh, it's just a dream, like uh, it's a nonsense. And then you have uh, a year ago, uh, Russian military, uh, a couple of miles away from Kiev. And if they yeah. take Kiev, they take population yeah. registry. If they have population registry, they, they, they can do the voting, the whole census part. Like, not census, but like, uh, I mean, the voting, like who wants to be, if Ukraine wants to be included with Russia, the same way like they did in Crimea. Yeah. But yeah. In Crimea, they actually got the old databases. So the outcome of the polls was that 107% was in favor to be uh, included uh, into yeah. Russia. Like, and and poof, like no, everybody understood that, like, oh, fuck, we need a copy outside of the country. 
so so and then you understand oh like yeah those believers they 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 talked about this like five or yep. seven years ago like yep. uh and and that's why uh the execution is also so important so uh even though i got this criticism from my own university i still went to the I still in the military and and then security people and they agreed that this kind of uh additional uh, capabilities they need to need to be developed for the country and uh, today Estonia has the network of data embassies outside of the country right. so uh, we right. have one official one which is uh, public known which is in Luxembourg mm -hmm. but uh, we have the like regularly backed up registries outside of the country right. uh, like more I think since, since 2016 now so 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 if, if we look at this in in, in the leadership context you, you have to be a storyteller. You have to be also quite charismatic to actually be able to convince people and persistent, right? Uh, I mean, uh, there's even theory about this. Uh, for any kind of uh, significant change, you need three things. You need charismatic leader, uh, historically, I don't know, Jesus Christ, Steve Jobs, mm -hmm. uh, Adolf Hitler, uh, Donald mm -hmm. Trump. You have to have a message that is bigger than the person. So even right. like uh, we have to admit, like uh, we that okay, we might not like Trump, but he was charismatic, right? And his message was way bigger than his competitors. Like uh, so, nobody remembers the Hillary Clinton's uh, message that uh, let's change together. Like, yeah. But everybody remembers like let's make yeah. America America great again. And that message is so much more powerful than Trump as a person. So right. you have to have the message like, and uh, with Steve Jobs, for example, uh, the message was uh, the famous uh, advert that he, where he actually stared to the camera and said, like, uh, said that I speak with you, the people who are like wanting to change and who are not always listened and um, but mm -hmm. you you have something to tell to the world and and uh, you have something to contribute to the world like i'm i'm talking to you i'm basically uh, pushing certain um, set of words to the audience that everybody could find like uh, something yeah. that is uh, suitable for them and the third element you need like uh, on top of this charismatic leader and and a strong message is that uh, uh, the people have to believe that um, it's it will change something in their life and it doesn't have to mean that it's money it's also mm -hmm. the like belonging to somewhere or like um, uh, seeing that uh, your help also can uh, um, like have, have like significant change for the world or like you can make the world a better place like uh, uh, or like you can relate yourself with some kind of mission. Like, so uh, if you have those three elements, then the change is happening. Yeah. Even in yeah. smaller scale, it doesn't have to be, I don't know, like, great, let's make America great again. Like, uh, it can be also that uh, let's become a 10 million nation. Yeah. So so I'm going to start transferring you to the the execution part with with, with this. Maybe Maybe you can comment. So... Business leaders obviously are not always, or, or mostly, are, are not there without opposition because you you get told what to do. So so you get given a vision and you get told to go into that direction. And and uh, there's often a difficulty in, well, I'm I'm going to say listening and collaboration skills because you lead with this vision that is not yet there. You have to believe it and you have to get there. You still have to get the execution in place. To make the people realize your vision and and also get the benefits that you're saying to themselves. So so I'm gonna now transfer you toward mm -hmm. toward execution. So uh, may, maybe start with this. So I'm gonna start with the the startup context. So why is execution, in your belief, the the biggest superpower for for startups? And then we can go into more 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 like what what's execution, but but. Uh, first of all, I think, yeah, first of all, I think that uh, uh, great visioners are uh, like uh, complete shit in management or managing stuff. So right. they are bad managers. Uh, yeah. So, uh, but uh, uh, like they are great 
visionaries, uh, if they are capable to uh, at least understand that uh, I have to hire like proper managers to make to execute all this. Plus, uh, also to understand if it doesn't work, then to change that. So, um, as a government CIO, like um, I think I fired eighty percent of the team on during the first couple of months because I right. saw that like I can't execute anything with them. I right. mean, uh, they were keepers. Like, uh, and like, if you want to build something okay. new, you need builders. Yeah. But uh, and and you need a great manager and and. Uh, Life has been uh, very good with me because with, in all startups or like initiatives, I have always found a great manager. If not on a first try, on a second try, and sometimes it takes years, mm -hmm. and sometimes you make mistakes, and I have made many mistakes. But uh, but great managers, if they believe in you and like you can give them like proper tools, and then you can be a proper partner to them, like uh, they they will actually make all this happen. So, so you're saying that uh, execution requires the skill of a great manager yeah. uh, and the cooperation with that visionary leader yeah. to get to the right direction. Yeah, because like the visionary leader gets carried away quite sim in quite simple terms, mm -hmm. like uh, uh, already a new idea or new aspect uh, fancies him or her and, uh, and you're gone. Like, yeah. uh, but but managers are like uh, they are result driven, and uh, and and that's what you need for execution. Yeah. So so um, uh, let's talk a bit about the culture that needs to be created. So so you 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 are you are in a in a in a in a company that needs to execute that is step by step toward the goal, right? I think I, I heard you speak at at a conference or maybe maybe on a video about the uh, about these small steps that you need to take toward the vision. Or, or then I've listened to too many vision <laughs> <laughs> videos this week. But 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 just talk a little bit about the what is the culture that needs to be created by these managers in the organization and what the peoples then uphold and. And, and uh, because I think there's there's a danger that not um, that, that you start hiring very similar people. So so you start getting this this culture that only fits certain types of people because everybody's so execution focused, wants results, people burn out. I'm, I'm I'm trying to get into this this thing that how do you manage the building of the culture? In an environment where you know there's there's a visionary leader and there's uh, a management layer that is focused on or skilled in managing execution. So yeah, first of all, yeah, first of all, I don't want to be just another smart ass uh, who repeats the uh, same kind of uh, trends that everybody anyway follows. Uh, we have failed. So uh, exactly what you are what you used as an example like uh, you get the uh, same kind of team and you think that everybody is good with the tempo and and the uh, toughness like uh, you have for the for the leadership and uh, and then they are burned and then they leave and then you suddenly discover that fucking hell like one third of the team has left like so uh, what happened for example with us in Nortel in 2004 uh we were small back then yet but still a uh, huge amount of team just went away because they said like we don't work, want to work on weekends and weekends anymore and then uh, right. and uh it's not joy i mean and uh so change it like um and then we we had a cultural change uh we call it like uh, you have to notice like so Let's say if there was an employee working after 6 p.m., uh, the manager had the trouble next morning because, like, why the person is still at the office? Mm -hmm. I mean, the person needs to be with the family, like, uh, cooking mm -hmm. food or, like, uh, spending time together with them. Like, so, uh, so, uh, and, like, there was, has to, had to have, like, a special excuse why somebody worked late. Right. And uh, you start to... I mean, like focusing on very small stuff, let's say uh, 
uh, like um, you have a, a team member who studies on the same time at university, let's say in the master's. Mm -hmm. So there's no point to plan any kind of deadline uh, into spring because like uh, he or she needs to vis visit, uh, finish their thesis link. So, so, uh, and then you start to notice this kind of small stuff, like uh, the whole culture like gets better. But again, like, it's super simple and then and, and super like easy to talk about oh yeah you should do this and that and like you know this and like uh it's super simple whether you in uh when when there are good times i mean the good times in the sense that uh, uh there is enough business you know what you're yeah. doing they have a market fit uh business is growing uh and you just need to execute like it's then it's easy to create the culture but it's super hard when you compete uh, for talent in heavy ways. Uh, you don't have perfect ma market fit. Not everybody understands your vision. Like maybe you are shit uh, yourself. Like so, I mean, and 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 in those conditions, like uh, it's it's so really much important that you you first get your your. Um, understanding about the business together first like who is your customer what you're providing uh, what are the expectations like how far you are from these expectations uh so so the value prop is so much more important than the culture because like right. uh uh what's the point to have a great culture and shitty product yeah i mean it's uh, i think it's a uh, investor's nightmare yeah that uh yeah. everything looks great everybody's happy and like shining and smiling but uh <laughs> where is the revenue where is the profit <laughs> yeah so uh and that's a trap so i think it's so much more important even if you have to do tough choices and let people go uh it's so much more important to get your shit together first and then think about culture so uh i guess then you are saying that um uh, it's the job of the visionary leader to really lead, that is to explain to people, you know, where we are, where we are going, what you should be doing, so that people will feel comfortable. Uh, I mean, even, uh, by the book, the by the book, you're right. By the book, it should be this way. Uh, the sad part is that uh, quite often the visionary leader is not capable to uh, to make that clear uh, explanation. Uh, uh, like now we should do make this or that kind of change. Vision leaders in their hearts, they are usually quite soft because they're not mm -hmm. managers, which mm -hmm. means that even if they see that, I mean, it takes more time than it was planned. So we should cut costs. Mm -hmm. Usually they're not, they are not the first ones who are, who are making the change. Like it's still like, uh, I mean, if they are founders or the CEOs of the companies, like, uh, uh, like they should make that decision that, okay, we are start to cut now but they still need that manager's help. And that's why it's so important that manager understands the psychology and, and capabilities of the vision leader also. So yeah. the company would, uh, wouldn't spend too much time just uh, being a happy uh, seeker. Yeah, yeah. So I was gonna go into the recruitment here, uh, but I guess you, you, you talk about the management uh, so much that I think that's where the, the key is. But in, in execution focused cultures or performance cultures, how do you recruit? Or um, I'm, I'm, I think recruiting is uh, not, uh, I mean, historically we had made one hell of a decision. Uh, we've, uh, in 2004 or 5, we fight against, uh, fought against uh, Skype and, and Swedbank who were like, uh, I mean, they were capable to pay three times more to the senior engineer than, than we did. And they understood that we're never going to win this fight. And uh, then uh, we turned to the youngsters. Uh, we didn't hire from the universities, but we went to the universities and started to give lectures. Mm -hmm. So we, our, our, our engineers were able to pinpoint who, are, who is good in the, in the next batch of, of university students. Uh, so um, if you translate this to the NBA terms, like uh, think this way that five years in a row, uh, we, we took 20 best guys from the draft. Right. Like, uh, so not like, like 
Boston Celtic can choose first and then Atlanta Hawks and then Los Angeles Clippers. No, no, no. Nortel, yeah. Nortel, Nortel, yeah. and yeah. Like 20 <laughs> best guys. And then like the rest is yours. Like, and, yeah. uh, and this way, like uh, five years in a row. Like, so uh, that's definitely was uh, one of the cornerstones of our success. And, uh, and the people we hired this way are still running the company today. Like, so um, uh, that was definitely uh, like a very good skill. But uh, I think from even uh, more important than hiring is, is the way how a team works together. And uh, it took me many years to understand that uh, not all personalities can, can actually work together. So uh, and instead of trying to solve their uh, uh, differences, uh, one just needs to be sent to uh, Macedonia. Like that's a sentence of uh, old Rome that like if somebody becomes like inconvenient, like it, yeah. like that person was sent to Macedonia or like in ancient uh, Greek, you had elections two ways. One was uh, who were in favor. And then you also had uh, a chance to uh, to write the name or like uh, who you basically fully dislike. And that person was abandoned to the from Athens, uh, I think, for five years or two years, or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, two two more kind of, kind of things before let's let's close and take take some questions if, if the audience has. Uh, if you look at you know Estonia and the, the Nordic countries, um, I I do think that we we are very execution focused here. Uh, so, so uh, I mean, more introverted cultures than, than say in the South, uh, very, very uh, comfortable with the pause, uh, very comfortable in getting a task and executing it and asking for more when you are ready. Uh, what do you think are the strength? Uh, so, so do you think, we in this region, and you can talk about Estonia because you know know that most. But just feel free to talk about any other the cultures or people you you faced. Do you think we have strengths or or weaknesses that help us? Uh, you know, maybe work under visionary leaders and, and create visionary companies here. Uh, Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I think for high growth companies, uh, the Nordics is very good because uh, uh, if you don't count Swedes in, then uh, the Nordics people don't have a problem with making a decision. So uh, if something needs to be decided, like uh, we can decide and uh, we can take the responsibility. So, uh, for example, I have worked, uh, like I said, many years for India. It's a nightmare. It's like U.S. corporations where uh, the decision is uh, basically, I mean, I can't decide. My Supreme needs to decide. My Supreme yeah. uh, can't, uh, can't decide. Uh, another like top level person needs to decide. And it's a nightmare. So you're yeah. waiting for a decision like a month like yeah. uh, compared with the Nordic uh, models where uh, uh, independent teams have their own PNL and they just need to accomplish whatever has been set as a goal for them. Like so, uh, from that perspective, I like to work with Nordic teams way more because, like, they can take the responsibility. They don't need to wait for the decision. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, uh, definitely, where we lack behind is still uh, our experience with large markets. I mean, the whole Nordic market is, I think, twenty million people, something like that. Which yeah, mean, which is, uh, I mean, it's like one third of the UK market, or like uh, one fourth of the, of the German market. So, uh, uh, doesn't like like still be lacking like experience, like how to sell uh, the large markets, and like uh, from the especially from the sales and marketing perspective, how to grow fast. Uh, it's it's more like a Estonian problem. It's not so much I think Swedish or Finnish problem, but definitely a Estonian problem. So, so, so you are saying that if we want to execute a really big vision, we we actually have to execute, or we have to build have to build teams quick that execute on a much larger market than our home market. Or we have to go global. By the way, 
uh, yeah, true. And uh, and uh, to be honest, like uh, if you look uh, Estonian, Finnish, and other countries, unicorns, they all have done it. And they, but it's a good learning also that they have done it uh, using uh, resources and experience from the other markets, uh, right. not just going uh, by yourself. And uh, so, uh, so it's also it's it's a strength and weakness at the same time. We can't do it ourselves. That's a weakness. But uh, the weakness is recovered by the strength that uh, if we are capable to hire good guys outside of, of of our own countries, then things starts to evolve fast. So remote work is maybe a solution. I know in Estonia there are many many more like percentages much higher than in in Sweden and Finland, Denmark of you know workers outside you you know the home country in the startups. It's also uh, I think uh, the age problem. Like uh, I would love to hire more outside of Estonia. I'm right. just like I say, too old. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, w- w- one last question for me before before I'll ask you to to summarize. Uh, so, um, um, and this is more for the SaaS audience, you know, here. Uh, and I, I don't know because I, you know, but do you have any? So, so in SaaS, we are now in an industry where there are a lot of you know similar companies. So a lot of people, when they pitch to us, they pitch execution plans because you are creating a better pipe drive or better, you know, product that is, is already out there with, with small modifications. So innovation, disruption, maybe it's incremental. Uh, the, the visions are maybe not so grand. Can you still apply this in industries where business software and, and, and things like this where you know you are not, not maybe uh, you you are executing, but you are not maybe executing on on that big of a vision. You are, you are grabbing some niche or or you know some market segment, but you are not revolutionizing, you know, the double. But, but that's a very that's a okay alternative. I mean, uh, for example, uh, if you take Bolt. Uh, uh, they tried to invent their own way to do and reform the taxi industry and uh, it didn't go well until they started to uh, copy what Uber was doing very closely. And mm. after that, it went like extremely well, like up there. So, or like uh, look at Bolt. I mean, uh, there there were like solutions out there, but they were just truly so bad that... Uh, yeah. Will change the like the whole way, like how how we think about those kind of things, like. But uh, like innovation is not dead. It's just, uh, uh, I mean, it's so much easier to do something slightly better than than to figure out the the, the new stuff. I mean, I take my own example uh, to the like to be fully honest. Like uh, I'm not one hundred percent one hundred percent sure that uh, community motivation stakeholder capitalism will start to flourish during the next five years it will start to flourish that that part i know because i have seen uh, how people are motivated and like uh, how the like eyes are shining if if their contribution is recognized like uh, i mean i understand that uh, it's fun to do the wikipedia and quora and stack overflow free mm-hmm. of charge but uh, especially in stack overflow case like uh, you do free of charge but certain people get rich like so why not to share that that outcome with yeah. the ones who actually contribute the most so uh, yeah but it's i mean it's new so mm-hmm. uh, you have to challenge that and and uh, to be honest uh, you are a startup person also categorization is one of the most hardest uh, startup uh, ways to go like it's much easier that to uh, much easier to anchor yourself like okay i'm just a better option scheme or like i'm just better uh pipe drive like you said like so uh because for example uh if you do a uh, pipe drive type of uh, states pipeline solution you don't need to uh, explain uh, to your audience like what is the uh like how like that the sales needs to be organized like you don't have to explain that like so just mm-hmm. like sell them better software 
where, for example, in our case, we truly have to explain what is stakeholder capitalism, like mm -hmm. uh, what it gives you that uh, if like hundreds or thousands of people of your community are actually your uh, shareholders also. Right. Yeah. So, right. so, uh, and it's a, it's a tough world. Yeah. So, so I'll, I'll add it to this summary, but I'm, I'm just saying that, you know, mm -hmm. a visionary leader is a great storyteller that basically brings people along onto something that he, you know, truly believes. So there's a message that he can come. The, the, the message is bigger than the person himself or herself. Right. And, and the audience feels that there is something for them also, something that makes their life better. Money-wise, uh, recognition-wise, uh, belonging-wise. Right. Those and in people. execution, in execution, you have to have that manager because you might have weaknesses in terms of actually, you know, executing. It might be young founder who hasn't done it yet. You have to bring in a great managers to execute and you also have to bring in people that are not all the same and take care of the people so they don't burn out and just build a culture that you know maybe goes goes somewhere but can retain the best people uh, that you need at different stages when you build that, that company and also go global don't stay here you know go, go to the bigger markets and, and take the biggest opportunity you can mm -hmm. we have questions uh, so I'm going to jump to those to, to keep the timeline. Um, not sure if you can see these. They don't have a lot of upvotes. So I'm going to start uh, from uh, just the top here and then maybe maybe jump around a, uh, a bit. Um, so um, um, so let's, let's take Janina's second question here. Um, uh, can you give some advice experience on how to ensure that the whole company has the same understanding of vision and that execution really is moving towards the vision? Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's a great question because uh, uh, when you have built a great company, there are always one thing that uh, people will whine about and that's uh, internal communication, which means that uh, there's always like never like enough uh, internal communication uh, but uh, I think the on answer here is that you have to be honest mm -hmm. uh, honest both ways think go well like you talk about and, and, and everybody can feel good about it but also uh, if things go bad you don't hide them uh, from your team right? everybody understands even the last programmer understands that sorry like the product is not good enough and the sales doesn't go or like we don't have uh, uh, proper messaging or uh, whatever is the reason, uh, whatever we think it's a reason, uh, be honest about it. Like don't, don't hide the fact that the things are not good. The next question here is what has helped you more during difficult times? Uh, vision or faith? And I guess here the faith is the belief in yourself. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I think one topic we didn't to touch is that uh, you can be wrong. I mean, which means that you have to be able to fail fast. So uh, and even if you have a bigger dream that, okay, I want to achieve this or that thing, and you think that the path to that dream goes in this or that way, uh, might be wrong path. Vision might be right, but the path might be wrong, which means that you have to be able to fail fast. And, and that's why we need a manager who is uh, capable to, to keep you on the ground and say that, like, no, 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 no. We need a decision here, like, either this way or that way. Like. Mm -hmm. So here's a question from Dharma. Uh, vision leaders have need to have a self-confidence to admit that they... Uh, are not very good in decision making or execution. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, they can trust their managers. Do you agree with this? Um, totally agree. Yeah. So, uh, but um, uh, I also have a message to managers, uh, which is that uh, don't expect uh, options if there are no results. Mm -hmm. 
And that's, I think, one thing that uh, people think that I managed, I, I, it worked. And even if the results are not there, like I still have a right to, to get the bonus. Like, mm -hmm. Nope. Right. <laughs> I think here we have a different opinion with you. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so I'll, 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 um, a couple interesting points here. Um, so, uh, Matti Yuka hears this that uh, he's noticed that basic things are very difficult to communicate. Like, you know, what is the real value of the business and to whom for visionary, visionary leaders? Uh, yeah, but like, uh, this is, uh, I think it's a very good question, first of all, but uh, that's where you need to put your time in. Like, you have to work the basics out. Uh, I have more actually faced the other problem that uh, what you want to achieve is very clear. The way how to achieve that, then like for, for example, what is the minimum set of functionalities that you have to put together or you have to make available? Like uh, uh, that's a different story. And uh, yeah, so uh, so so that part, uh, like if. If it's hard or difficult to communicate, it's wrong. Right. Like work with your message, uh, right. especially towards your team. It might be hard to communicate to the audience, and uh, that takes definitely time. But for your team, like uh, that needs to be clear. So yeah, a couple more. Um, Ilka asks, and this is related to fundraising, and maybe somewhat to your previous answer. Uh, when you have a grand vision um, and, and you're raising financing uh, and you, you have something new, it's, it's maybe hard to raise financing or it could be easier if you just keep selling you know, and you get the numbers there. Uh, how, do you, how do you see fundraising for, for visionary, visionary leaders? Uh, visionary leaders who have a uh, track record definitely can raise uh, with a PowerPoint. Uh, if you uh, if you don't have a track record, uh, uh, I mean you need numbers. I mean, for example, if you are a former Skype founder and you have a great new idea, nobody wants any results from you, like uh, because everybody understands that you don't waste your time just to chase unicorns. Like so, uh, you have to have a belief in into something. You have noticed something that is that the world hasn't seen seen yet. Like so. And we see some bad examples here too. You know, if you we think of FTX funds, you know, investors totally. Yeah, I mean that. Yeah, also uh, might be failures. I mean, uh, once again, I want to emphasize that uh, I have failed, and most probably I will fail in future. All again, like so, uh, you're not always right. Like so, it still happens. Yeah, I'm gonna take the the last one. Uh, so. If we, are look, look, if we are looking at a multicultural team or district organization where people understand things, you know, slightly differently, maybe because of their culture or their background, what are the do's and don'ts when you communicate the vision? Um, I don't have too much experience with this, to be honest, like, uh, and uh, that's why I didn't want to be another smart uh smart as here so i won't answer that um what i have seen working is that you have this independent teams like uh regionally or or in a in a discipline basis but uh but my experience in that field is is limited right thank you tavi i think that was a great chat uh i know you're busy so you you need to log on log out and, and get back to to real business good luck you know building this startup good luck mentoring the the, the, the startups and thank you obviously for for this session um and we'll yeah. post recording to also those who who did not have the time to attend the full session today thank you for having me thank you Tavi. yeah thank you ciao and thank you everybody bye bye